Hi, my name is Mia. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another intro video. We have just come back from our trip two days ago, so I figured it'd be a good time to share some tips with you that I wish I had known and that I thought of while traveling. So I took some notes and I'm trying to go in like a logical order. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Number one would be to plan your trip accordingly so you don't waste your money on getting the wrong ticket. Now, if you've ever been on the Interrail website, you would know that there's many different ticket options um, ranging from like three days within a week to seven days a month, two weeks within a month, uh, three months, 15 days within two months, and so on and so forth. Um, I'd recommend you just check out the Interrail website for that, but uh, you want to make sure that you plan your trip accordingly so you don't waste your money on getting a ticket that has way too many travel days than you could even do or even want to do. Now, a good tool for that would be the Interrail app where um, you have this planner section and you can research your trains um, and they put it all in a nice little map for you to visualize it and yeah, just make sure you count the days that you need, you're aware of how much time you have off school or off work, and yeah, just don't overspend. Uh, tip number two is also for money saving, and that is to wait for interrail tickets to go on sale. Um, so if you're planning this trip a couple months in advance, I'd recommend not to buy the ticket immediately because interrail offers like 10% discounts all the time um, so yeah just a quick little money saving tip if however you are living outside of Europe and uh, you have to get a URL ticket those pretty much never go on sale so uh, in this case you can just go right ahead and purchase your ticket and those tickets are good for 11 months after you purchase them anyways so you have plenty of time to use it if you buy it throughout the sale Quick little break. I totally forgot one very, very important tip in this video and I just simply couldn't finish editing it and uh, upload it without this in here. It is super, super important to have a financial budget for your trip that allows for emergencies meaning for extra seat reservations for an extra night in a hotel for maybe even a flight like we had to pay for um, because the trains in France were striking and it was a whole mess there anyways getting seat reservations and for a while they didn't accept interrail tickets anymore it was a whole chaos and um, so we ended up having to purchase flight tickets for the both of us which ended up costing us $200 more per person which is obviously an expense that was unexpected, that was last minute, and that was an emergency. So just make sure you have extra money put aside in case anything goes wrong like this. And um, yeah, now back to the video. Next tip, if you can, just avoid the busy seasons. Uh, go in the off seasons, meaning spring, fall, and winter, or at least try not to go within the exact holidays, especially summer holidays as the trains will be packed and yeah obviously hotels are going to be more expensive all the cities are going to be full of tourists so yeah if you can try not to go during vacation time tip number four is to check with your phone provider for coverage within the different countries that you want to see obviously this is very important as we all have come to rely on our phones for everything uh, to do research to navigate to book seat reservations book hotels etc you name it we probably need our phones for it so it is important to know that you will have service uh, within the different countries and with our phone provider for example we did have service within almost every country but very much reduced so you have to watch your data usage for switzerland for example is a common country for phone providers to not have service so just make sure to take the necessary precautions for whichever provider you have number five would be to pack as light as possible because whatever you bring, you will have to carry on your back. Um, now, I have tried to do that and I will link my packing list down below. And my packing list uh, worked out for the most part, but I have <laughs> made some mistakes. Um, and that brings me to tip 
Number six is to not underestimate how cold it can get. Now, um, this will obviously depend on your trip. We went in the beginning of summer and we traveled to mostly northern and central European countries and it was still very much cold on most days. So we ended up needing our warmer clothes most of the time and that's obviously what, what we brought the least of. But even if you don't end up going to northern countries and you just stay within like Italy and Spain and all that, um, I would still recommend to at least bring a comfortable hoodie because the train's air conditioning is so cold a lot of the time that you'll be glad to have brought it. Number seven would be to research the different methods of reservations. Now, for most countries it's easy, you can just book your seat reservations right through the Interrail website or online, but there are exceptions to this. For example, in Spain, you need to actually purchase your ticket in person at the train station. And at the major train stations, this can mean hours and hours of wait time. So you need to be prepared for that. You need to schedule time for that. And I know for France, sometimes they still require you to um, send your ticket uh, physically to you by mail. So again, just plan according to that, maybe make those reservations before you leave on your trip so you have them comfortably sent to your home. Next tip, number eight, would be to research the demand of these trains. Now, a good method for that would be to use the DB app, the Deutsche Bahn app, where you can type in the routes, the trains that you're gonna take, and it'll um, say something like low demand or high demand. Now, if it already says high demand expected in this app or on their website, then you will most likely not find an empty seat to sit on. So that's totally up to you if you want to save the money and sit on the floor or stand the whole way, or if you're willing to spend a few euros to have a seat for your journey. But yeah, just it's a good resource to kind of get an idea of whether you're going to need to buy seat reservations or not. Another tip is for those really, really high demand routes. For example, going from London to Paris is a very, very popular route. So you will need seat reservations and those sell out really, really quickly. So I recommend you book those a couple weeks or even months in advance. Just book them as early as you can. Try to, you know, nail down your trip, all the dates that you will go and book that already because like I said tickets sell out fast and um, it'll be very frustrating to be stuck or even have to like switch to taking a flight or something so yeah make sure to book those seat reservations early on number 10 would be to double check train times now I'm referring to the interrail app again which is very handy and very reliable most times but we had one instance in Prague where I researched our connection and I relied solely on the time that the Interrail app mentioned just to then get to the station and find out that our train was actually half an hour early. Now, lucky for me, we went super early and we still had 10 minutes to figure out uh, the platform that we needed to go to and we caught that train. But just to avoid any kind of stress or avoid missing your trains, just double check and don't just solely rely on the Interrail app because they may have outdated or wrong train times. Tip number 11 would be to look for accommodations as close to the station as possible or find a storage locker for you to lock your backpack in because it is very uncomfortable to carry your stuff halfway through the city. And also it's just much more convenient in general because every time you get to a station, and you just walk five to 10 minutes to your accommodation, you can just drop off your bag and you're free to go and explore. Same in the morning, if you have an early train to catch, you don't have to get up hours and hours in advance because it's only a short way to the station that way. Tip number 12 would be to bring snacks. Train rides can be very long and no one wants to go hungry, especially if you take a, an early train, nothing will be open before you go on the train and there won't be any chances to buy food if the train doesn't have an onboard bistro. So just come prepared, buy your favorite snacks and you're all set. 
Also, those long train rides might get boring at times. Now, of course, it's beautiful to look out the window and enjoy the scenery, but sometimes there's really not much to see out the window. Sometimes all you're gonna do is be passing one field after the next, and it's not gonna be very entertaining. So make sure to bring something to spend your time, whether that's a book, or whether that's like a card game if you go with a group of friends or I don't know download an audiobook bring a kindle whatever you you feel like spending your time with just bring something to stay busy tip number 14 would be to document your trip in any way possible whether that is through pictures through videos through keeping a diary or journaling or drawing whatever your preferred method is it's just going to be so nice to look back on your trip years and years from now and yeah last tip just go out there and enjoy don't overthink it um, and i hope you have a great trip i hope my tips helped you if they did make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos so yeah thank you for watching have a great day